a place, a field with grasses. But you look a little more closely and it's a very special area. It has orchids that grow in it that bloom late in the fall or actually late in the summer, early fall called nodding ladies tresses. There's uh, plants like Canadian Burnet which is not a rare plant but you don't see it all over the place and it's it's a very a pretty plant when you look at, up at, at close. Ladies tear thumb, a polygonum, a plant that's related to smartweed, that purplish plant that you pull out of your garden. But this is a, a native uh, polygonum here. There's uh, marsh blue violets that grow down in that area. There's sedges and rushes. There's um, song sparrows that will nest on the tufts of grass uh, that's in there. It's just an amazing place. Walking sticks during the summertime, late summer, you want to see walking sticks go down to this meadow and you'll see these walking sticks just blending in with the, the grasses there. A fantastic uh, place to see. And uh, f quite often I find snakes in the lower meadow here, the uh, eastern milk snake, which is a, a constrictor type of snake. And uh, actually this one's very gentle. Unlike the snake that bit me the other day when I was walking the trails, a, a, a water snake. Um, and garter snakes, a lot of people call them garden snakes because they see them in the garden, but the true name is garter snakes uh, that can be found on the lower meadow. Now we're going to look at what people typically think of pine barrens. When you think of pine barrens, you think of pines, scrubby type of oaks, and there's different aspects of pine barrens that we're, we're going to, to look at now. Uh, pine barrens do have a lot of pitch pine. If it has more pine than oak, it's called a pine oak forest. If it has more oak than pine, it's called an oak pine forest. They are both pine barren areas, but because of fire regimes, which we'll talk about in a moment, the more fires, the more pine you have, the less fires, the more oak. There's a relationship there, uh, but pitch pine you'll find in, in all areas here. Um, a variety of oaks, uh, post oak, scarlet oak is probably the, the most dominant oak of, of these areas. Um, but there are two shrub oaks that are found here. One is a dwarf chestnut oak, and the other is an oak called scrub oak. Now a lot of people call everything that looks scraggly scrub oak. But a lot of scraggly stuff is only scraggly because of a fire that came through. Those oaks will grow into tall trees. But there are true, true shrubs, scrub oak and dwarf chestnut oak, that only grow four feet tall or so. And they do are truly shrubs. You know they're a shrub because they have lots of shoots coming from one, one spot. Unlike a tree which has a central trunk that, that grows up. Um, as I mentioned, uh, scarlet oaks, white oaks. Again, when you have more dominant oaks, it's an oak pine forest rather than a pine oak forest. And closer to the river, you see more of your oak pine forests. When you get over to the east side, because of the frequency of fires, you see more pine. So pine oak forests. Another thing about pine barrens is uh, the shrubs. The shrubs that you see all throughout are called heaths. And the heaths are your blueberries and your huckleberries. And uh, there are, there's quite a variety. At, when you first look at it, you, you just see, if you're not too familiar with, with the, the plants, you're just seeing uh, blueberry or huckleberry, whatever you want to call it. But to look at it a little more closely, you'll see that there's a tremendous biodiversity in those shrubby areas. There's black huckleberry. There's dangleberry huckleberry. Bottom is dangleberry huckleberry, which has a blue fruit. Black huckleberry has a black fruit. There's dwarf huckleberry, which is a rare huckleberry. And then with your blueberries, there's early low bush blueberry, late low bush blueberry, intermediate blueberry. I'm not showing you the, how knowledgeable I am about all these things. I, I'm just trying to get you an idea that there, there's a tremendous variety here. The biodiversity here. Chokeberry, wintergreen, bayberry, the various uh, blueberries, frostweed, a, pr a pretty flower that blooms in the summer, starflower, another woodland uh, flower, 
trailing arbutus, which you see a lot of on Cordwood Road, growing in amongst the grasses. If you look closely, you'll see um, this uh, trailing arbutus plant. So there's a tremendous biodiversity here uh, at Kinequat. And along with the biodiversity of trees and shrubs and, and plants, you have quite a variety of wildlife here. Most Anybody who's visited here often sees uh, deer. Uh, we also have uh, box turtles. Now this is a land turtle. This is not something that when you find you want to put in the water because it doesn't have web feet and can't swim very well. It, it lives in woodlands eating the blueberry. All right, so you have box turtles that live in the woodlands here. It's not a water turtle. It doesn't have web feet. It's not a turtle that when you find you want to put it in the water. And that's one of the things that we teach kids here, that there are turtles that do live in the water and turtles that live in upland areas. Uh, there's Fowler's toad, which is your common garden toad that you see on Long Island. But there is a rare toad that lives here called the spadefoot toad. The spadefoot toad is a subterranean creature. It lives underground most of its life. It only comes out during very heavy rainfalls, late spring and early summer. It'll breed in the puddles. The metamorphosis of the little uh, tadpoles that are born is very quick. Within 10 days or so, they become adult toadlets and they go eat and they'll go back and burrow underground. This is a good year, I would suspect, that, they, that we'll see them because of all the rainfall that we've had. Uh, so I'm going to be watching for them uh, over the next few weeks to see if they make an appearance. This is a, a, the spadefoot toad looks very similar to this, the, the Fowler's toad. Uh, it has a vertical eye slit where your uh, regular toad has a horizontal eye slit. And uh, the spadefoot toads have an appendage for digging uh, on their, their back feet. So this, there's some differences, but if you saw them on the ground next to each other at first glance, they would look identical. But that's a very rare toad found here along the Connecticut. There's a whole host of uh, butterfly species here, monarch butterflies and uh, swallowtails of all different kinds. And of course, anybody who's here sees chipmunks um, quite frequently. The bird life, there's over 200 species of birds that are here. Many of them nest uh, on, the, on the grounds. We'll get back to some of the birds in, in a little while. Red fox is a pretty common mammal that uh, can be found here. Right now the pups are out this time of year. So some pups last night and they don't have the fear of people yet. So they will come right up to you sniffing you and and very curious about their, their surroundings. Once they become an adult though, they, they don't hang around too much. But they're out there eating mice and voles and crickets and they're herbivores, or they're omnivores, so they will also eat berries, the blueberries and huckleberries that are out there as well. And of course squirrels, which you see all over the place, but did you know that we have flying squirrels here? A lot of people didn't, don't realize that. Nighttime, you come here, and uh, if you know where to look and how to look, you'll see flying squirrels just gliding around in the darkness. And you've seen, probably seen pictures, movies of them, and how they, they do them in slow motion, and they're kind of gliding around. They're nothing like that at all in the wild. They are the most comical. They, they'll jump off a tree, and you'll see them falling down fast and they hit the side of, of a bark and slap it and uh, you're like, oh my gosh, are you hurt? Uh, very agile, but uh, the, the flying squirrel is, is, comes out at nighttime here. Now, pine barrens are pine barrens because of fire. And if you didn't have fires occurring here, the whole woodlands would change. We've had numerous fires over the years, some small, some large. The fire will come through and just burn 